John Conlon manages to get it for us. Maguire, and away goes Maguire. 20, 13, McDonald's to his left. Oh! He tried in a beautiful movement that just didn't come off. He really had the time to gather it into his hand and have a go. It's Tony Kelly. Flicking it forward for Shane Golden. I saw him score from there against Offaly. He's going to do it again here. Good play by the six mile bridge bat. Tony Kelly chasing after this and he judges it perfectly on the 20. 13, what a hook. What a magnificent hook by Brian Lawton who never gave up. Compliments to the Castle Martyr man. Patrick Horgan from way out the field. Ah, oh, that is some point. But credit Brian Lawton with the hook. Compliments to Patrick Horgan with the point. Coming across is Shane Amore. Ah, oh, brilliant play by the cornerback. He's got a great engine, Mori. In the centre is Conor Ryan. Flicking it on for us, Conor McGrath. Little jig makes a little bit of space. Leads it off for us, Pat O'Connor. Short ball, first Tony Kelly. Brian Lawton trying to mark him. Kelly onto his left hand side. Let's fly. And away we go again with Tony Kelly. Second point of the match for the Belly Airman. Mark Ellis changes direction, goes over to the far over side. In comes John Conlon. Connor Lahan is there. Lovely stick work and footwork by Connor Lahan. Now, what about the finish? It's dropping over the crossbar. Brilliant points, not just the striking of the ball, but the footwork and the stick work here. Beautiful, excellent score. Patrick Cronin, Brendan Bugler is there trying to get a hurl to it. Picked up instead by Patrick Horgan. Available is Alan Cadigan. Inside the 45, steadies, shoots and scores. First point in this qualifier, and it puts Cork in front. Breaking ball picked up by Tony Kelly, Shane Golden, McDonnell to Conor Ryan, and Conor Ryan straight between the posts. Claire are hungry, eager, and chasing in packs. Chance here for Cork to go in front just before the break. That's a really good score. Waiting for it is Aidan Walsh. Can Turkman to Can Turkman. Aidan Walsh uses a short grip and puts it between the posts. That's a very fine start by Cork to this second half. Bill Cooper. Ball given away. Gratefully accepted by Shane Golden. Over first Colin Ryan. First touch was so important. Ryan makes a little bit of space. Will it curl? Off the post. Here comes O'Donnell. Little touch. And Anthony Nash was there. And so too was Brian Murphy. That's at least three goal scoring opportunities for the Banner County in this match so far. Two in the first and one now. Mark Ellis stepping away. Derek Conan about to flick if he can. Still, Honan puts the challenge in. Mark Ellis runs into a spot of bother. Ball comes free, pulled on this time by Jack Brown. Comes to his opposite number seven, Cormac Murphy, from way out the field. The Malaman has raised the white flag. That is a brilliant point by Cormac Murphy. Brendan Bugler steps away from the challenge. Sends it into the space. Shane O'Donnell after this, hops nicely for it. Tony Kelly is outside him. Tony Kelly calls for it, then hits it on his right and splits the pulse. The Ballier man, third point of the game. Tony Kelly gathers just behind that central line. He's hitting this with incredible power, magnificent accuracy. He was literally standing along the sideline. Cormac Murphy. And that's a good ball. Jamie Collin. 
getting inside the cover. Then hits it high, very high. Straight between the posts. Jamie Collin sending out a clear signal that he's arrived. Shane O'Donnell taking it on, hitting it, and connecting this time. It was only a matter of time. It's his second point, and the sides are level. Cormac Murphy gets a touch to it, Damien Cahalan. Flicking it, Colin Galvin chasing it, getting there ahead of Brian Lawton. Patrick Kelly to Tony Kelly to Colin Galvin. Drop it, drop it. Oh, my word! What a fantastic score! Welcome home, Colin Galvin! A magnificent effort! They'll have it again. Tony Kelly. Shane O'Donnell wants it long. And he has it on the turn. What a brilliant block down. I think you've got to give huge credit to the defending of court. Wonderful play. Darren McCarthy. Seamus Harnady underneath it. Good work here by Patrick Horgan. No free given. Still Horgan. And that is a thing of beauty. Cork have gained superiority at a crucial junction. Seamus Harnady. Cody O'Sullivan has gone inside. There's a chance here for Cork to stretch their noses further in front. Wonderful play by Cork. And Cork are still in the championship. Clare are out of the championship 2015. He was nip and tuck all the way. But in the end, Cork came through. And for Conor Ryan and for Clare, it is heartbreaking. Full-time score in Simple Stadium, Thurless. Cork, 20 points. Clare, 17. Very pleased. Um, we knew coming up there was going to be a very, very difficult task to get over Clare. They have some superb young players, but I thought our lads rose to the occasion brilliantly tonight, and uh, a couple of them gave extraordinary performances to keep us in the game, and then managed just to pull away at the end. I said it after the all Iron, and maybe people didn't take it properly. Like these guys have won three twenty ones and a senior. Like it, that was a big ask over a few years. We came from a place where Clare hadn't won. We'd won one twenty one before that. I think we'd won a Munster minor or two, but no all Ireland. So we've a lot done the last few years, and our tackle rate and our work rate wasn't as good in the last year and a bit. Now, funny thing is, I felt it was just starting to come back, that we were getting there or thereabouts, and I think you could see signs of it today. So we'll learn a lesson, we'll go back, and we'll come back fighting. That's, that's what we're about, Marty. That's the way it goes. Yeah, disappointment, obviously, for Clare, but don't know, you'd have to say, we now have Cork Galway and Dublin Waterford in the double header quarter point. That'd be great great double header uh, we presume it'll be third as we don't know but but let's talk about Cork for a moment they were very impressive yeah Cork were, were, were really impressive days you know last week against Wexford the, the performance was very good last night if you like this game was really the the highest quality game of the, uh, of, the of the weekend I like a number of things about Cork. You can see here, maybe a bit of poetic license with Viva La Revolution, but their style has definitely changed. And, you know, finally they seem to be applying a system. Aidan Walsh was really good last night. Look at him here, hearing up the wing. What I liked here is the support. Alan Cadigan is there, Conor Lehan is there. But Aidan Walsh didn't panic. He was happy to use the man. Here, you see Cormac Murphy in the worst place possible for a defender going back towards his end line. And again, similar to the first piece that we, we showed. Cork were really composed. Alan Cadigan again here, being the supporting man and looking for Bill, Bill Cooper. And in case it goes out of my head, Bill Cooper gave a stellar performance mm. for Cork and was one of the key reasons why they were successful last night in Turles. A bit like Tipperary, Cork have great skillful hurlers. Look at this skill here from Conor Lehan, yeah. underneath the legs, Brilliant. onto Patrick Horgan. But look, he doesn't stop there. You hear it in other sports, pass and move, that's the mantra for forwards and players all over the field here. That's a really fantastic score. Score of the night, maybe. You know, yeah. Behind the goals, and it's a, you know, a thing of beauty isn't even an, an exaggeration, that type of skill. But there were a lot of wides in the game, and had Clare had fewer wides, they could have won it, in fairness. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's, it's a fair Small statement. Small margin, like. The only thing I would say is that Cork had even more, more wides. But a couple of things here. What's Brian Murphy? His defence, Conor McGrath's coming through. 
but also watch Damien Callan. He deserves credit in this position. He made up a lot of yards, but you'd have to say Conor McGrath and Shane O'Donnell straight through, you'd have to back him. If you stopped this here and said what was going to happen next, you'd imagine point or goal. Conor McGrath loses possession and Cork actually went up the field and I think got a score, a score out of this as well. Shane O'Donnell taking it on, got a lot of possession in the first half. Brian Murphy's doing as well as possible. Dara Honan, he did a lot of things in the good, but you'd be saying you have to be driving on here and even carrying that ball into the net if necessary and going for the, for the juggler. Mm. And a lot of players striking from distance was wayward and you wouldn't associate that with them. Yeah. And I'd have to say, you know I'm a fan of Clare, I'm a fan of the way they play the game, think they play the game the right way, but they're lacking the killer instinct since the 2013 all Ireland final. Yeah. Well, that, that raises questions. I mean, do, does it need a change in management or is that unfair to Davy? I think that's my, my opinion. That is, I, think, I think that's unfair on Davy, right? Because I actually agree with him in that when I was looking at Clare last night, I was saying, we're seeing a lot of good signs here. Some of the way they were moving the ball out of defence was absolutely outstanding. But I think they've just lacked that since, since 2013. Yeah, I, I, personally, I think he has a bunch of players and talented players from midfield up. He has probably 12, 13 real quality. But I think. Because he, what he invests so much in the system, I think he's micromanaging them a little bit strongly. Mm -hmm. And I've no doubt there's pressure going to come on him. Um, I know he says himself he has two years left, but for me, you know, as a business model, have they delivered on the potential? Yes, they've had a couple of good years under 21, but I think the people at Clare, the hurling people at Clare, would want to see them winning a Munster title. Their Munster record is poor. I back him to, to turn around. I back him to be, to be a success again. But like any business you mentioned, business, you need good people around you. I think he lost a key man in Paul okay. Kinnerk yeah. uh, last year. Yeah. I wrote at the start of the year that I felt he was going to be a loss to the setup. Okay. And I'd imagine you'll see Davy going back to, to Paul again. Last week uh, on this programme, you showed Richie Hogan and the space he had for Kenny against Galway and you said he needs to be man-marked and I think it was Dalo says he and maybe the other man in hurling who you would man-mark is Tony Kelly and it was interesting to watch what happened yesterday. Yeah, last night and that's uh, you know you were talking earlier Des about the way that the game has gone but you see here number 11 uh, nearest to us and uh, Tony Kelly. What we saw last night was that Brian Lawton did a man for man job on him and that's the way the game is going and early days including myself I was behind the goals here on the terrace I was saying this is a gamble that might not pay off. Mm. But what I want to show here is I want, I want to give huge credit to Brian Lawton. He's a newcomer to the, to the game. You see here the way he tracked Tony Kelly all the ways. Like you said, I think the likes of Richie Hogan, if you are to defend against those people, you need to do that. Here's a mistake from Brian Lawton. But what I want to show here is, look at the yards he makes up. Tony Kelly is great pace. This is a fantastic mm. hook. I know it's in the first half. But you could say it was a game-saving tackle. They got a score off at Cork, did yeah. They did indeed. And all credit to that young man because that's a, a really tough task to be given to mark one of these guys. Here, if you like, sums up the night for Tony Kelly and also shows that kind of a... Just that little bit that was missing from them. He's a fantastic player. I almost feel a bit guilty in showing it because he's such a good hurler. Yeah. But trying to play a 1-2 in that situation, you'd have to question the direction. Right. And when we look at the stats... The turnovers in the bottom right is an interesting stat, isn't Stats it? Stats can be dangerous, Des, but what I'd look at here is the turnovers on the right-hand side. I think it talks about where Cork were more intense and tackled with more intensity than Clare. But I'd also draw your attention to the top left-hand side, and it shows that Clare had much more possession than Cork. And also, if you look at the top three individual possessions, yeah, all Clare players yeah. had the most right. possessions. So that backs up my point. Plenty of possession, good method but lacking the killer instinct. Now, there was a controversial score, or certainly it wasn't given in the end, but it was a big talking point last night uh, at that moment when it was given. And it, there was a similar incident last week. Yeah, but before we go there, I, I, and to look at that, Des, I think it's very important for me. We, we've looked at the tapes during the week, and I think I, I, I owe an, an apology to Pat O'Dwyer and to his officials because it, it looks as likely or more likely than that I was wrong. Not conclusive, but... It, Not conclusive yeah. is fair, but it looks more likely that I was wrong and he was right. So my apologies on that and apologies for being so quick to judge and being as harsh as I was. But we have to call things as we see it. You see here in, 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 in last night's game, Patrick Horrigan intercepted a pass. Watch a couple of things. Ball is clearly over the bear. Watch the position of two young players. One of the young players nods his head to the other one. The other person to watch is the goalkeeper here. He actually stops the young player from putting up his flag. Like, this is pretty crazy stuff and, you know, you have to, uh, you would have to question the umpires here because it is tough for the umpire that's on the near post, but the umpire at the back post who nodded his head and said the ball was over the bar, you'd wonder, 
I'd make two points to, to be, try and be constructive. I'd question the colour of the slitter, right? Our ball that we use is white. Look at the sky last night, how grey it was. The posts are white. Mm -hmm. And I'd also have to question the GA in terms of why do we have Hawkeye in Crow Park and in one of our premier hurling grounds where most for big games and probably our quarterfinals will be due to be, to be played, why isn't Hawkeye still in that stadium? I think it actually... It will be imminently, won't it? Yeah, I think yeah. it actually degrades our games that, that, it, that it's not, not, I, not in place. I suppose, look, the, 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 the nail in the coffin for that piece of, of, of footage is that, look, you don't want to see any team be knocked out of the championship because of a decision like that. I mean, you look at last year, what happened in the Ireland final, and OK, I can say, can he benefit from it? But it would be a shame to see a team, any team, knocked out of a championship when you put in so much and invest so much for you know a call like that. And that's why we need Hawkeye there. Yeah. All right, then, well, many thanks to you, lads. Lots of talking points in hurling tonight, so thanks to Don Logan Eddie. Next up, we're going to switch to football. Lots of great qualifier action and, of course, the Leinster final. We'll see you shortly.